But I think one of the reasons why these people have this deep-seated anger and resentment is there's a bunch of people out there that have these lives that are deeply unsatisfying because I think somehow or another through momentum and just through just things falling into place the way they are and people trying to fit their lives around the way these pieces have fallen into place there are so many people that are working all day long doing something that is deeply unsatisfying and and almost painful yeah, to them yeah soul killing soul killing yeah. they're stuck in traffic all day and then they're stuck in a cubicle after that they 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 relish the time to take a shit in the bathroom and look at their phone i mean they literally do that that's a, a highlight of someone's day they get in traffic on the way home. They get home after that, they're watching television, and they're fucked. I think that there's a ton of people out there that are probably listening to this that would like to be able to do something else. Absolutely. Whether it's make furniture. Well, they don't want a revolution. Right. They want to do something that's not soul yeah, killing. Yeah, yes. if you make furniture, you make furniture for a living, and you, you feel a great satisfaction out of that, and you sell that furniture, look, man, for making furniture feels good. If you can do that, you could you could cut those corners perfectly and sand everything down nice and stain it, and then it's done, and you get this satisfaction, and you sell it to someone, and that pays your bills. That is infinitely more satisfying than being stuck in some fucking cubicle working for someone that you don't want to work for, having to have these stupid fucking office meetings, talking to people in human resources, sitting down with your supervisor where they evaluate your job performance, and you, you know, you're not really, you know, you, you really need to be enthusiastic about this company. This company is your future. This kind of like, and you're like, fuck, kill me now. You know, there's a lot of people out there that would way rather do something else, and I hope they understand that they can. There's, there's a lot of people out there that have interests and they've never pursued those interests because they're fucking tired from doing they're some tired, boring, yes. soul-sucking It's job. hard to go to work and, and put your effort into that and then come home and then work for yourself. It's yeah. very hard. But I'll tell you what, there's, there's a part, like you said, there's a part of it that once you start making stuff for yourself, that's self-motivating, right? It, like um, I told somebody to start a podcast and I said, the first time you get some feedback email, that will kick you in the rear end to keep doing the. It, it becomes, it becomes, um, you know, life is a verb. I always say, and you have to actually act. But by acting, you change everything in your future. And I think there's way more creative people out there than we realize. Oh yes, absolutely. And I think they would love to have some sort of an opportunity to do something like that, and especially like an artist, someone who's an artist. Man, there's never been a better time to be an artist because you could showcase your work. And in, 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 look, if you send me something cool, and I, you know, you send it to me on Twitter, and I'll You'll fucking retweet it. Yeah, yeah, it. Totally. I to re retweet things all the time, mm -hmm. and all that takes is someone else has to see that and say, "Wow, that's amazing." And then do, 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 it just propagates to all these different people's Instagram feeds and all these people Twitter feeds and next thing you know you've got a business mm -hmm. and you're up and running and it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be quick but, but the neither, job you're doing now right. ain't easy or yeah. quick the soul killing one ain't easy or quick either but people think like oh how long is that going to take oh but when, you know when you start out doing a podcast well, we only got 10 downloads well that's how it works I just did it as a passion project and I think if people have a regular day job if you could just find some one thing that you do as a passion project and just keep building on it just keep at keep watering it keep adding fertilizer keep giving it attention keep giving it focus and you can escape you can escape and you can be self-serving you could be okay you're gonna be okay you just just do something that's good stop saying it's saturated if you're good it'll stand out this idea that like, oh it's easy for you to say everybody's got these stupid barriers they put in their own head you got to resist those goddamn things because they don't do you any good and they certainly define the potential for your future in a negative way it's not self-serving and it's not even real you know you you've, you've, you put this artificial ceiling on the potential for what you're doing if you hit a wall Okay, that just means you need to regroup and rethink. It doesn't mean that wall's there, especially when it comes to something like social media or like a, a podcast, something where you're just, you're putting out a piece of art, you're putting out something that you've created. There's no wall as far as like how many people are gonna enjoy it or how far it's gonna go. It's just, it is what it is. And if people don't like it, make it better. If they like it less, fix that. F figure out a way to do it. You can do that. And this, this idea that there's no way to get past the starting block today is just ludicrous. It's crazy. And it's just this, this poor thinking. And people that are trapped in bad situations, one of the problems is you feel like this is your future. You feel like you're fucked and you can't get out of that. There's no hope. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's no rainbow. And if you feel like that, that alone can be incredibly defining and limiting. But if you can look at 
If you look at yourself objectively and say, okay, I kind of am fucked here. I'm in credit card debt. I'm working in a shitty job. I, I, I don't like what I'm doing, but I have some ideas. I need to feed those fucking ideas. And I, fe I, I need to feed them and water them, and I need to set aside a certain amount of time every day to just try to make those things happen. You can do that. I think here's an important thing too. Failure is important. It is important. I think failure teaches you things that you don't learn from success. I think failure gives you an opportunity for self-examination and also gives you a feeling that is very uncomfortable. And that very uncomfortable feeling helps you grow. That when you feel like shit, you screw something up. Like when I've had bad podcasts, my podcast has always gotten better afterwards. When I've had bad stand-up sets, I've always gotten better after that because those bad sets motivate you. They get, they give you a perspective. Like, hey, here's some clear examples of where you fucked up. Yeah, what not to do. Yeah, don't, and don't look at these failures as like proof that you suck. Look at them as opportunities for growth. Look at them as opportunities to be motivated to do better. Man, there's a path, and you, we, we think of people like, you see an old person walking down the street, you go, oh, that person's always been an old person. No, that was a baby. That was a baby that became a 90-year-old man. There's a, there's a progression that you're not witness to. You don't see it. And that, that, that takes place in everything. It takes place in authors. It takes place in comedians and musicians. There is a starting point, and then with time and focus, and as long as you reevaluate and reassess and constantly, objectively look at what you're doing and then pursue it with passion and focus, you get better at things.